I moved to Los Angeles in 2001. I've lived in West Hollywood, Culver City, Century City, Brentwood, Calabasas, Playa Vista, Redondo Beach. I've never felt more connected to a community than I have since I moved to Lamita. The first morning I woke up and I kind of forgot where I was because I could hear the sound of a rooster crowing. It was early in the morning. I, I remember I just kind of sat up and then I heard the sound of a siren. I just thought I've arrived. I, I'm in a, <laughs> I'm in a small town with roosters and chickens and livestock, but I'm surrounded by the big city. That's the place for me. I love access to all the amenities of the big city, access to Hollywood, access to the beach. You know, I can still hike. I can, I can do all the things that I love to do and have access to all the amenities, but then I have that small town feel. Lamita is a very special place. It's a small town. It's only 1.87 by 1.87 square miles. The downtown area is super cool. Lamita has incredible shopping. <laughs> it really does. There's a couple of dress shops downtown that I, I absolutely love. We also have, incidentally, the best coffee in the South Bay. If you're ever in town, stop by Corridor Flow and grab yourself a cup of coffee. We have this great uh, sustainability shop. If you wanna go there and get your dishwashing soap, your shampoo, conditioner, laundry detergent, household wares that we use daily, you can go in, you can fill your reusable bottles. They also have bottles there that you could fill up. It's affordable. You won't have to worry about using up plastic. Looking toward the future of sustainability. There is not one, but there are two breweries in the city of Lamita, including Burning Daylight, Burning Daylight. Uh, great brewery, great food. You won't be disappointed. And there are people in there having a good time. This is our downtown Lamita. Downtown Lamita is on Narbonne. Lamita is at the foothills of Palos Verdes Peninsula. So that hill that you see behind me in the distance, that is Palos Verdes. Lamita is situated west of the 110 and the 405 freeways. For me, that is a huge positive because you have that cool Pacific Ocean breeze pushing all that pollution away from us east. Sorry guys, over there on the uh, east side of the 405 freeway. It, it really does add to the quality of life here is that uh, air quality here in Lamita. There are four main corridors in the city of Lamita. Lamita Boulevard is one of them. Narbonne, Eshelman, and the PCH, the Pacific Coast Highway. These are the four main roads, secondary highways, although PCH is a state highway. It's very busy, people drive very quickly on this road. It connects Torrance with Harbor City, and it's a thoroughway for a lot of traffic to come right through Lamita. And uh, that can be, you know, off-putting for some of the residents who are just trying to have their sleepy, friendly town. A lot of our commercial zoning is along these corridors. You'll see a lot of, uh, of restaurants, you'll see a lot of shops, retail, um, gas stations. We have an Arco station here at the corner of Pennsylvania and Lamita. Most of our commercial zoning will be along those major corridors. Now I'm on the Pacific Coast Highway. This is a, a state highway here in Lamita. It's one of our main corridors. Expect traffic in the appropriate times of day. It's really contingent on when the schools, when the schools are in and when the schools are out. So this is Eshelman. Along Eshelman are a ton of cul-de-sacs. You know, nobody goes into a cul-de-sac unless they're supposed to be there. And if they're not supposed to be there, then they gotta go. That's one of the things that I love about Lamita is that cul-de-sac life. Great for people who want to live a quiet lifestyle. You know, they like suburbia. 
They want to go home and be away from all the hustle and bustle. So I'm on another cul-de-sac up in Lolita Pines with your basketball court and your soccer goal. And you know, this is their domain, which is so nice as a young family. Um, so keep all that in mind. I mean, quality of life in the homestead is, is, is key to your success as a family and your future. Um, so these are positives of living in Lamita. For you young families out there who are looking at Lamita seriously, LA Unified School District is the school system that Lamita residents have access to. There are over 20 schools in Lamita. That's pre-K all the way up through high school. We have four public schools in the city of Lamita, including the one behind me, Fleming Middle School. Please look into the schools individually. Every school is different. Every kid is going to line up with the school and the staff and the teachers in a different way. There's a lot of Lamita residents who are proud to have come up through that school system. If you have any more questions on that topic, please reach out. I'm happy to answer your questions and help you find a workaround if you do love Lamita and, and really want to find a way to make it work. I'm here at the Lamita Park, and as you can see, this is a huge asset for the city of Lamita. Kids come here and play. Families can come and have birthday parties. There is a huge soccer field, baseball diamond, tennis courts, and a very engaged park and rec commission in this city. They are uh, very passionate about Lamita and making sure that kids have access to all kinds of activities, sports, fitness, uh, nutrition, and um, keep our open spaces clean, safe, and fun. If you're a church going friend, then there are a lot of great religious institutions in the city of Lamita, including this one, St. Margaret Mary Church. This church is very popular with residents. It's a beautiful community here. This would be a good one to join if you are uh, new to the community. But again, there are several churches here uh, and religious institutions that lend themselves to all kinds of religion. The median home price in Lamita is about 850,000. There's about nine homes on the market. So inventory is usually low, which keeps those price points steady. Most people live in their, their homes long beyond what the average is. They love Lamita. They live here their entire lives. And a lot of them grow up here and come back here. So if you do see something come on the market, act quickly. Um, days on market is usually lower than um, than the rest of the South Bay just simply because people want to snap up those homes quickly. Depending on where you are in your life, whether you're looking to buy into real estate, rent, you want a new build, you want an old cool home, Lamita has it all, okay? We have every price point from $100,000 for a mobile home. We have new builds going into the downtown area. There's luxury apartment living along the corridor on Crenshaw and Lamita. You know, it's just a little something for everybody. Like most of California, Lamita is dealing with population growth. We do have affordable housing in the city of Lamita. We have Orchard Trailer Park here. This is a really nice facility. Uh, homes are going between a hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars. They're actually quite nice and in a world where tiny houses and tiny living is becoming more and more popular you'd be really amazed at what you could do with a small space. Now I'm in Lamita Pines, quieter neighborhood, shady. Um, I bet you can guess why this is called Lamita Pines. Lots of trees, beautiful trees. Um, and uh, it's a little softer in here. It's kind of starting to shift up into the PV Peninsula now. Still a part of Lamita though. These streets kind of, they dead end at the top of these hills. Really great little neighborhood. Nice, nice single family residences here. Okay, you're gonna have 5,000 and 10,000 square foot lots. Quiet living, family living community living here in Lamita Pines. This Lamita Pines area up in Glen Tree uh, looks out, these homes are um, have views looking out towards the Rolling Hills Country Club, which is quite nice. It borders our city here and uh, you got those beautiful views of that golf course out towards um, the beach cities and beyond. This little neighborhood here has some great homes. You know, the back side of these homes are really the impressive part because they look out on the most incredible views 
of Los Angeles, north towards downtown LA, the beach cities, the ocean. But we're gonna head up into Rolling Ranchos, which is another part of Lamita. I'm in Rolling Ranchos now, which is a community of Lamita. It is up on the hill, kind of the highest elevation point for the city of Lamita. It really is up in Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, that's the, the city that borders this little area. You cannot get to Rolling Ranchos from the rest of Lamita. You have to go through Rolling Hills, Rancho Palos Verdes, or Harbor City to get to this part of Lamita from, from the rest of Lamita. So it is quite separate in that way. Um, that said, it's one of the most beautiful parts of the South Bay. If you can see the views in this area are quite nice. Rolling Ranchos is arguably the best place to live in Lamita. In this market, Lamita, Rolling Ranchos, very competitive. And for a reason, the views are spectacular. This little part of Lamita is um, not as it seems. It is agricultural, non-commercial zoning. And it looks like a normal residential neighborhood here. You know, we have single family residences, um, nothing really out of the normal, but in this part of Lamita, you can have a pig, you can have chickens. Uh, they say you can't have roosters, but as I told you before, there are roosters. I'll never tell where because I absolutely love hearing it. I've been talking a lot about the agricultural zoning in the city and I gotta mention the Lamita feed store. This store has been here for a hundred years so as far as I'm concerned it's a historical landmark. It might actually be a historical landmark. Come in here, buy your feed for your horse, buy a chicken, um, you know anything that you're gonna need for any of your livestock, feeding your pets. There's wild bird seed that I come here for for those local birds that I like to attract to my garden. But this place is just incredible and owned by a local resident here. Been here a long time. Nothing like the smell of hay combined with city bus exhaust. <laughs> oh, here we go. Sirens. See, Lamita, you're a small town, but you're in a big city. You're gonna hear noises. You're gonna have traffic all kinds of good stuff. Every city has a city hall, right? Well, this is our city hall. City hall is where our council meetings happen, where residents can come and look for solutions to challenges or issues they have here in the city of Lamita. And when I went to my first council meeting, I realized that I wanted to become involved. And I have to say that I am very pleased at what I'm experiencing, going to my commission meetings, going to council meetings, and just being involved with my community and seeing what it takes to make a community run. So this is where the magic happens here at City Hall. I just popped into the library and they have a bookmark contest for kids. So I got my little packet uh, for my little one. Let's get her in the mix and see if she can win this bookmark contest for the uh, City Library. That'd be fun. All right, so what are the negatives of Lamita? You hear that? That is a jet flying over my house right now. I live in Lamita, um, on the west side of Lamita. There is a Torrance Municipal Airport, the Zamperini Airport. There is some air traffic noise, helicopters and small aircraft that do come in and out of that Zamperini Airport. So that's something to be aware of. And to be clear, they're not 747 you know, jet airplanes. These are small aircrafts. There are people who do complain about it. Uh, there is a campaign right now, um, take Torrance Airport back. I see signs for that campaign mostly in uh, Palos Verdes Estates and on the west side of that airport, understandably because it is louder over there. Being a realtor, I have done a lot of door knocking in Lamita canvassing. And I've met a lot of the residents. There's about 21,000 residents in the city of Lamita. Let's, I'm not saying I've met all of them, but overall I've had a really good experience talking with um, the people in Lamita. We live in a modern world. People are very mistrusting of each other. People don't know their neighbors. It, it could be tough. It could be tough to want to create community in a world like this. But that said, I have had some 
incredible conversations with residents. Overall, the city is very friendly. I, I will say that. I'm not going to say that I don't get shooed off by people told to get off the property, uh, dogs barking incessantly at me. Uh, we all have bad days. But overall in Lamita, my experience talking to residents has been positive. My number is in the comments below. My email is there as well. So if you have any questions about Lamita, I do know a ton about this market and I can tell you a lot more about it offline. Give me a call, please reach out.